Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Trackman44 here. Uh, you know, some of you guys that's been hanging around the channel for just a little bit uh, probably recognize this old 30. This is one of my one of my daily drivers. Um, and even though it's a daily driver, well, it means it's one that I go to pretty consistently. But sometimes, you know, because we get so many extraneous activities, the daily driver still might go three or four months without running. This thing's been sitting over here by the shed for a pretty good while. And um, I just need to get it, get it moved a little bit because I'm trying to make room to get that 430 case up here by the shed or even in the shed uh, to get to working on it. This thing, I brought it up to do a little bit of uh, minor work to it, you know. Just never got around to it, just got too busy. But at any rate, if you guys know much about Massey's, this is the Massey Harris 30. It's the uh, obviously one of the, the little brothers of the 44s and everything. Uh, pretty much identical except for everything scrunched down. Same, uh, same five-speed transmission setup and everything, you know. Uh, everything else is identical. This has got a flat head in instead of an overhead valve like the 44s. Uh, and this is 160 cubic inch. Uh, this engine here, as a matter of fact, is the exact same block in the early model 101 Juniors that had the F124. The mid line of the 101 Juniors, which upped to a 140. And then also the later of the line of 101 Juniors, which was the precursor to the model 30 with the 160 cubic inch. And when they upgraded and went to the five-speed transmission and made the Model 30 or created the Model 30, that 160 uh, uh, floated right on over and, and, and right on into it. So this same engine is very, very universal. Um, and they'll pretty much all swap out. And a lot of times they'll run Zenith carburetors uh, or Marvel, Marvel Shebler. Marvel Shebler is by far the most common, but you can find Zenith carburetors on them quite consistently. But uh, this tractor here, whenever I got it, I brought it home and it sat in lean two for about 10 years. I actually drove it, drove it on the trailer and, and played with it around here, but it needed a lot of work to it. The wiring was really, really bad. And I just parked it inside the lean two. Sat there for about 10 years. Me and my son pulled it out one time. He was just a little guy. And we were going to go ahead and, because it was going to be a simple uh, repair, just go ahead and upgrade the wiring, so to speak. We went to fire it up and that thing was locked up tight in the drum. A little more investigating. I had a hole in the roof that dripped perfectly dead center down the smoke pipe and this engine was just completely two cylinders was holding like an inch and a half of water on top of the the pistons and the others of course drained on but uh, this thing was a total mess so i had to totally rebuild this i pulled it apart took it to the machine shop and had them punch it to um, i forgot how many thousands over at least twenty thousands over to get rid of all the pits and everything you know and went ahead and put everything all back together and then uh, we've been running the running the tail end off of it ever since been a good, reliable, very good tractor for me, and I just love them because they, they're so economical on fuel, but they're just miniature 44s. I just really, really enjoy them. So what I'm going to do, I, I slipped a new 12-volt battery or a charged 12-volt battery in, uh, unless it went bad uh, overnight, and um, we're going to see if this thing will fire up. They typically fire up fairly quickly, even if they set for, for a, a year or so, as long as you got the gas treated. But school's out on this, and we're going to just see because I have had a little bit of an issue with the dropping resistor uh, in the past. I've had to actually go up and pull the dropping resistor and jump down to bypass the resistor, start it up, and pull it and put it back on in order to get it running. Uh, that's part of the upgrades that I was going to be doing on this, in addition to converting the 12-volt system from an ammeter to a voltmeter. Now think about this. An ammeter on one of these old tractors has virtually no load to it except for the ignition, consumes virtually no electricity at all once it gets started. Okay, the only real electric it consumes is the starter motor while it's turning. So if your tractor starts quickly and easily like these most of the time do, you have very little, very little amp draw on the battery, so you can barely see the charging position of the ammeter. It'll just maybe wiggle if you're lucky, or maybe just show half of a needle to the positive side if the alternator's putting out or the generator's putting out. I like to change them to a voltmeter simply because a voltmeter tells you what the battery static voltage is as soon as you turn the key on. You see if the battery is low, just stop, go get the charger, put it on, and uh, top off the battery before you ever try to start it, especially in cold weather. But then also what happens is as soon as the tractor starts and the alternator begins its output, what will happen is you'll see the output voltage of the alternator as it's going back into the battery referenced on that voltmeter so you can tell for sure if your alternator is putting out instead of having to get down there and about two inches away and just start and stop it a couple times to see if there's any movement on the ammeter. Uh, it's just aggravating to me. A lot of people don't like it, but I really like I really like converting them to a voltmeter. And that was another thing I was going to do. But, you know, didn't get to it. 
Now I got something else to work on, so we got to get this guy out, get it ready for the wood splitter, and uh, do something else. Now I say it all the time because I start these tractors many times from the side. Always do your hand, your shift and lever handshake, and also lock your brake or whatever you got to do, you know, to make sure something bad is not going to happen. So I've already verified that, but uh, we're not going to do it again just for that. Now, like I say, we may or may not have a little bit of luck. I do have the battery here. Uh, these bigger batteries, I actually have to put a piece of rubber there to make sure there's there's not any shark to the positive terminal in the bottom of the gas tank. I got to turn the gas on. Well, if the float bowl's got any gas in it, it should fire. I hope. Just it'll rotate anyway. Now, can you hear that rattling and carrying on in there? That's my throw out bearing. Uh, one thing that I did not do that I've been sorry for ever since when I had the engine out, I should have put the throw out bearing in. Uh, it, I just took a chance on it, and it, but it's been rattling like that ever since I put the tractor back in. And that's been good lord, it's been a long time. Uh, but it's going to fail me one of these days, and when it fails me, I've got no choice, going to have to do it. But like I said, I hate to brag on these old Masseys. But that's pretty much the way these things start if you got everything just about right in the uh, in the electrical circuit, you know. Well, this guy here's got the fancy roller draw bar. I really like that roller swinging draw bar. And of course it's got the uh, hydraulic cultivator lift you can see coming off the back end. Well you know I know I said I didn't mean to be bragging on the Masseys, but actually I did, because I really like the Massey Harris line. Uh, they really are reliable. So many of the parts interchange among the different models, and they're just a pleasure to work on, and they're real convenient to operate and, and, to just, and to just have for a good utility tractor. Even though it's a row crop, a lot of people don't like row crop, uh, they're just great. We farmed on hillsides with our row crops, you know, uh, all the time, and we've never had an issue. Uh, the lens just fell out of my glasses. Did you see that? Hey, and these are my brand new glasses, too. They ain't even, I bet you they're not even... Uh, Four months old. Well, hey man, that means um, I better cut this from short. And you know what? <laughs> this is Tractor Man 44. I'm out of here. I gotta go put that glass back in, man. I might have to run back into the optometrist. I am certain they told me these were safety glasses, uh, but it had caught just perfectly on the edge of a rock. And look at there, if it didn't put a doggone chip right in the side of my lens. Oh well, this is what it is.